drive. He calls himself a special forces commander. In reality, Mohamed Darat is a volunteer, guiding us along the front line of Libya's civil war. A ghost town on the outskirts of Tripoli, under siege from renegade general Khalifa Haftar. Can any other country stop this? Can the UN stop this war? Yes. A UN resolution last week demanded a ceasefire, but every few minutes we can hear incoming artillery or sniper fire, forcing over 170,000 people from their homes so far. This suburb of Tripoli has been turned into a no man's land. The incoming mortars and artillery appear to be indiscriminate, and General Haftar seems hell-bent on securing a military victory, on taking Tripoli itself, rather than suing for peace. Khalifa Haftar is 78 years old, and though he lived in exile in America for 20 years, it's feared he may be another Libyan dictator in waiting. His backers include Russia, Egypt and Gulf states, vehemently opposed to another Arab Spring though he claims he sent these fighters to liberate Tripoli from Islamist militias and to create a secular democracy. Nonsense, says this mild-mannered former architect, who's now prime minister of Libya's besieged but internationally recognized government. We are the legitimate government. We are the ones who have fought extremism. This is all part of their marketing propaganda. We're surprised anyone supports what is essentially a coup attempt. Last month, a peace conference attended by Boris Johnson and other world leaders agreed in principle that a UN arms embargo on Libya should be enforced. Proxy conflicts only come to an end when the external proxies decide they want to bring it to an end. But no sooner was the ink dry than dozens of cargo flights began ferrying supplies, believed to be from the United Arab Emirates, to territory controlled by General Haftar. 400 metres from the front line, the commander shows me the wing of a drone his men have shot down. He says that it too came from the UAE in an apparent violation of the UN's embargo though the Emiratis deny any involvement in Libya's war. We search uh, on net the... You looked it up on the internet? Yeah, about yeah. The, this model. The Emirates bring it from China. So you think it's an Emirati drone? Yes. This has become an international war, he says, and Europe should apply pressure to stop it. In an underground control centre, the fighters defending Tripoli have their own cameras, trained on the suspected positions of Haftar's snipers. So there's no ceasefire? No. <laughs> every, every day, every morning, they try to, to, to take one metre to you understand what I mean. Yeah, so trying to take ground. We are stopping them until now. But airstrikes have proved harder to prevent, including this horrific attack on a military parade ground last month. 26 new recruits were killed and dozens injured. Although the facts are unknown, Raja Hatawish is in no doubt. It took two days before they could identify the body of Mutafir, a 20-year-old son. It was an Emirati drone. How can they say they don't have anything to do with this war? The world needs to look at Libya to stop the bloodshed. It's being destroyed. This apocalyptic landscape is the legacy of two previous wars. First the revolution against Colonel Gaddafi, then the battle to expel ISIS. And now this road leads to the desert front where General Haftar has launched several ground and air assaults. The men tasked with fighting him look ragged and ill-equipped, and they claim they came under fire this morning. Their arsenal includes this lorry load of ageing Soviet Kalashnikovs, artillery shells and rocket-propelled grenades. It's ex-Gaddafi stock, and it's bought on the black market, one of the biggest arms markets in the world. Why are you here? We are to turn to our place. This is our country. We're defended by. Haftar is coming with the mercenaries from Sudan, from Chad, 
from Russia. Now, though, the balance of power is shifting. These pictures, which we can't verify, appear to show a cargo ship delivering Turkish armoured vehicles to Tripoli last month. The internet is awash with propaganda from both sides, but these are allegedly Syrian mercenaries sent by Turkey, though the airline denies it. It's Tripoli's worst kept secret that President Erdogan has sent some 2,000 Syrians, and Libyan's Prime Minister never denies it here. But General Haftar might say to you that you have Syrian fighters sent by Turkey, and so you're violating the UN arms embargo. We signed an agreement with the Turkish government after months of attacks on our city. I find this talk about Syrians curious. There are lots of mercenaries on the other side, including Syrians. We have a complete list of all the planes going there, but the focus is always on our side. Libya's popular revolution of nine years ago has been betrayed, with two warring sides battling for one flag. It's also a proxy war for strategic advantage, for gas and for oil. With America largely absent, the question is just how far Europe is prepared to get involved. Jonathan Rugman, Channel 4 News, Libya. Well, I'm now in Martyr Square in the heart of downtown Tripoli. I was here when the revolution against Colonel Gaddafi first started nine years ago. It was a hopeful time, an optimistic time. And the celebrations on this ninth anniversary, although there are thousands of people here and fireworks are being let off and gunfire as well, the celebrations are bittersweet because Libya has been plunged into civil war pretty much ever since. Now the European Union is getting involved in a practical way for the first time. It is sending an EU naval mission to uh, monitor a UN arms embargo backed up by aerial reconnaissance. But there is a catch because the Austrians are insisting that this naval mission does not go near the routes used by African migrants because it is worried that the ships will be forced under international law to pick those migrants up. So this is very clearly not a humanitarian mission, it is a military mission and any talk about b deploying troops on the ground is woefully premature, partly because nobody wants to do it and partly because there is no ceasefire to enforce as you saw from my report which has just been broadcast.